Hi everyone. So today I want to talk about a topic that I would say is highly misunderstood and that topic is probiotics. So most people know what probiotics are in general. Um, these are organisms that are found in supplements, foods, and beverages that are intended to confer a benefit to human health. And these organisms can include different strains of bacteria and fungi that are associated with like a healthy microbiome that upon consumption are supposed to improve things like gut health, immunity, etc. Um, and there's a lot of context within which probiotics are discussed. And one of the most important and misunderstood ones, I would say, is in the context of post-antibiotic use. So most of us haven't had interactions or have taken uh, antibiotics ourselves. Uh, these molecules either kill bacteria, which are known as bactericidal antibiotics, or inhibit the growth of bacteria, which are bact uh, bacteriostatic antibiotics. Um, regardless of the type of antibiotic consumed, these molecules have a severe impact on our endogenous microbiomes, our gut microbiomes, and other microbiomes um, within our bodies, in fact. But today we're gonna focus on the gut. So um, when you consume these molecules, you will essentially deplete your endogenous microbiome in the gut. And this will ultimately, you know, this could lead to things like gut distress, poor digestion, um, ultimately in the long term could lead to weight, things like weight gain, ulcerative colitis, um, inflammatory bowel diseases in general. So there's a lot of talk and thought that, you know, consuming probiotics after taking antibiotics would be beneficial because you're gonna be restoring um, your gut with healthy microbes that will support your health moving forward. But surprisingly, there was a study out of Israel, uh, a university in Israel in 2018 published in the prestigious journal Cell that showed that this was actually to the contrary of what was really happening when you consume probiotics after taking antibiotics. So in this study, they had three different arms. They had a group of people who were on um, an antibi antibiotic for an extended period of time, I believe it was a week. And then uh, there was another group that was also on antibiotics, but after their antibiotics, they were instructed to take a probiotic for a certain period of time. And then the third group received the antibiotics as well. And then in addition to that, to try to restore their microbiome, they received something called a fecal matter transplant, FMT. So that's essentially what they did is they took fecal matter from these individuals before starting the study, froze it down, and then used that fecal matter to re-inoculate their gut microbiome after being on antibiotics. And so what many people thought would happen is that, you know, people who were given the probiotics after the antibiotics would um, basically restore their microbiome more quickly and have less effects from their antibiotic treatment. But what actually happened was surprising. What actually happened was the people who were given antibiotics and then probiotics took orders of magnitude longer to restore their pre-antibiotic microbiome. So actually it took up to five months for most of these individuals to have their microbiomes returned to normal. Whereas the individuals who were given antibiotics and instructed to do nothing different afterwards restored their, mic their natural microbiome within a, a week or two. And the fecal matter transplant group restored their microbiome the quickest within a couple days. So this was a really striking result. And not only did it imply that, that, that probiotics aren't beneficial to the microbiome post antibiotics, but actually that they're actively harming and inhibiting the growth of our natural microbes that we are found in our are found in our environment or supported by the foods that we eat because the control group the one that got no probiotics or fecal matter transplant after antibiotics recovered their microbiome relatively quickly so this study actually showed that taking probiotics after antibiotics inhibited the growth of the natural species that were in the gut prior to antibiotics and you know, uh, uh, we will link the study in in the in the not in the comments in the uh, description, but you can check it out. So they did some mechanistic studies after finding this result and found that there are certain species of Lactobacillus, which are generally considered to be beneficial microbes in the gut. Uh, but these strains of Lactobacillus actually create molecules that inhibit the growth of other species that are normally found in the gut specifically species that create the short chain fatty acid butyrate. And if you've been following our content for a while, you'll know that butyrate is an essential molecule 
Not only is it the primary fuel source for colon cells, but it also modulates immune function and, and uh, contributes to overall anti-inflammatory activities in the body. So it's very critical. And essentially these lactobacillus strains inhibited the growth of the bacteria that make butyrate. So, you know, this was leading to impaired gut function and setting people up for um, gut distress and inflammatory bowel diseases moving forward. So the takeaway from this is really that after an antibiotic session or treatment, you really want to, you know, fecal matter transplants aren't very accessible for most people. Um, but what this study showed is that essentially you just going about your normal life, eating um, a very diverse diet filled with different fibers and indigestible carbohydrates and polyphenols that will feed like the good strains of bacteria in your gut that will support your health and support anti-inflammatory um, actions. So you want to include foods like these in addition to getting outside into nature and really exposing yourself to a wide breadth of bacteria and other microbes in the environment. Um, because ultimately the factors that influence a healthy microbiome, microbiome are uh, microbiome diversity, meaning the number of species present in your gut, and also the presence of bifidobacteria in the gut, because bifidobacteria create molecules that go on to feed numerous other strains in the gut, and therefore will promote diversity. So we've talked about this before, but to accentuate bifidobacteria coloniz colonization of the gut, you essentially want to eat things like resistant starches, which can be found in beans, lentils, cooked and cooled rice, um, cooked and cooled potatoes, as well as foods containing polyphenols. So these are like dark fruits. Um, you can think of like different berries, um, citrus. These foods will all feed bifidobacteria in addition to supplementing with things like 2 lactose, like, which is found in uh, Layer Origins Pure HMO, um, and other indigestible carbohydrates like fructooligosaccharides and galactooligosaccharides. So all of these molecules, um, consuming them, will promote the growth of bifidobacteria, which will in turn increase microbial diversity in the gut and help to bolster butyrate production, leading to overall lower inflammation in the gut and the body, and setting you up for having a nice diverse microbiome that can be strong in the face of um, pathogen exposures and any sort of, you know, novel environmental exposures that could otherwise kind of shift or throw off your microbiome in a negative way. So after antibiotics, this is what we really want to focus on. Um, consuming these polyphenol or resistant starch-rich foods, other indigestible carbohydrates, as well as fermented foods, which have been shown to increase diversity of the microbiome, um, even greater to a certain extent than a high fiber diet. So having these um, molecules and foods in the diet will really support your gut as it recovers from an antibiotic treatment. And essentially probiotics should, in, in, except in rare cases, should not be, should not be given in the post antibiotic setting. It seems like the benefits far outweigh, uh, sorry, the risks far outweigh the benefits in this case. And, you know, probiotics might have a place in very targeted um, applications for people with specific disorders or known um, issues with their microbiome that maybe you would want to inhibit the growth of these species. So um, that's one application for probiotics. But in this setting of post-antibiotics, we really want to focus on dietary and environmental exposures to regain the microbiome from pre-antibiotic exposure and get our, our guts back on track to be healthy and in a low infl inflammation state. So I hope this was super helpful. Drop your uh, questions and comments below. And yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.